Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at a sporting goods store, a gun shop, quite impressive gun shop, called uh, Hunter's House in Copenhagen, Denmark. And we're taking a look at a couple guns related to a Danish gunsmith, or gun inventor, by the name of Bent Anja Nilsson. Hopefully I pronounced that reasonably close to correctly. Um, and he's an interesting character in that he, he was born in 1925, started tinkering on guns in about 1970, and had, believe it or not, a degree not in engineering or fabrication, but in art. He was a painter, um, and when he got into guns, one of the things he did was actually engraving. So he got involved in firearms engraving, as you can see here. And, uh, you know, that's, that's not terribly out of the ordinary, but what is unusual is to find an engraver who is also actually a designer. And that was the case with Alnya. So this is one of his M80 pistols. This was the first gun that he designed. Um, inventor slash tinkerer, I think, would be appropriate, um, appropriate words to describe this fellow. Uh, this is a, it is actually one of the very first, if not the very first, I'm not sure, it's not something that I've specifically tried to follow up on, um, stainless steel 22 caliber target pistols. So this is an Olympic style pistol. It is magazine fed. It is Chambers uh, standard 22 long rifle. Uh, he designated this the M80. I believe work on this specific model began in 1978 and it went into production in 1980 and did turn out to be reasonably successful. You know they're not, uh, didn't, didn't burn down the market with it, but these are reasonably popular with Danish target shooters. Uh, partly I'm sure out of national pride, but they are also quite good guns. There are a couple interesting little features that he built into them. So we all know that dry firing 22 rim fires isn't something that you really want to do a lot of. However, if you want to be a very successful target pistol shooter, you do need to do a lot of dry fire practice. So with the M80 here, this, this by the way is fired, I can cock the trigger mechanism, but not the hammer, with this little lever, and I can practice my dry fire without actually dry firing the gun, just by breaking the trigger mechanism. And you'll notice that this lever is basically right under your thumb with a right-handed grip. That's actually a really clever idea and really pretty handy for a practicing pistol shooter. Now as far as the rest of the mechanics of the gun go, um, it is a simple blowback 22. Uh, the safety here also doubles as the magazine release, so that's fire. I rotate it down and it's safe. And then if I push it in, I can pull out the magazine. I believe that's a 10 round magazine, which would be standard for a 22 caliber bullseye competition. Um, it does lock open when it's empty, so we can close it without the magazine. Uh, very nice trigger in it, set up to take uh, barrel weights if you want to add weight to the front of the gun, which some shooters do. Very nice sights. You'll notice that the slide uh, does not move, or the sights are not mounted on the slide. So it's going to be a, a quite accurate, very nice target pistol. So this was reasonably successful, um, and in the 1990s Alna went into developing some other guns. So with his next designs, Alna decided to focus on the military and police market, and he came up with two different pistols, the M800, which we have right here, this is in 32 ACP, and the M900, which was in 9x19, and I don't have an M900 here unfortunately. Um, the 800 was to be marketed to the Danish police, they were interested in 32 ACP as their duty cartridge, and uh, so this, these were made 92 to 94, he was developing this, um, this and the M900, and the Danish police considered it, but ultimately they were already using Walther uh, PP and PPK pistols, and they decided to continue using those and not adopt this uh, new domestic pistol, which really honestly doesn't surprise me a whole lot. Um, a, a major police force is going to be very interested in, in having a gun from a well-established and large company that can provide maintenance and that they know will be a, a secure long-term supplier of pistols. So, however, this is a nice, it, it feels good in the hand, um, seems to be a pretty, a pretty durable gun, definitely an accurate pistol. If we take a look here, you'll see this is built largely the same way as the 22. It is a simple blowback action, 
and the bolt here is, un is unconnected to the sights and the barrel. So you have a fixed barrel, you have fixed sights. This I expect would be a very accurate pistol. Um, it has a decently nice trigger in it as well. Uh, it is single action only. And then the magazine release is kind of an interesting part here. So let me close the slide. There we go. Kind of a three-handed operation to do that. The magazine release is this button. It is ambidextrous. It's located on both sides of the gun and falls right under your thumb when you're in a firing grip. You just push it forward. There we go. And it only goes forward a little bit. And that pops the magazine out. The only other control on there is a manual safety on this side, where up is fire and down is safe. So that one is, well if you're right-handed, or well, if you're left-handed that's great. If you're right-handed that's still a little bit on the awkward side uh, to push the safety up to go into the firing mode. In total I believe he only made 16 of these pistols, so they're extremely scarce today. And uh, very cool that Hunter's House actually has this one here that we can take a look at. Now after the, the failure of this to obtain any uh, military or police contracts, the M900 similarly uh, failed to be interesting enough to the Danish military to replace the SIG P210. Alna went back to 22 caliber target pistols. And this was the last gun that he designed. This is the M5 for 2005. Uh, he would ultimately die in 2011, by the way. And I believe he made about 150 of these. Um, they didn't, I'm not sure why, but they didn't catch on as well as his earlier ones. Um, it might be that the, the target pistol market has a lot more options in it these days, and he may not have been able to be as competitive as he was in the 1980s. The M5 is a little bit different from the M80. Um, a lot of the, the features are not necessarily better or worse, but just different. Um, the magazine release here is now on the heel of the gun, and it's a nice big button that's easy to get out. Still have serrations on the bolt down here. Uh, there is now a continuous bar over the top of the bolt, which there wasn't on the M80. Um, you have this big button here which allows you to lock, well I should do this the correct way with a right-handed grip. This allows you to lock the bolt open uh, when the gun doesn't have a magazine in it. That's mostly a, a range safety thing. Still has very nice precise sights. Although now the rear face of the sight is easily removable and replaceable if you want a different width or a different depth. We have a windage adjustment for the rear sight right there. Um, and no longer stainless, of course, uh, probably just to bring down the cost of, of manufacturing. We have really good materials now um, that can, they can do just as well as stainless steel for this sort of purpose. So this was one of the very last pistols of Bent Anya Nilsson. So there you have a brief overview of uh, the gun-related work of the Danish artist and tinkerer and inventor and gun designer Bent Auna Nilsson. Hopefully you guys enjoyed uh, taking a look at this video, and if you enjoy seeing this sort of content on the web, uh, please do consider checking out my Patreon page. It is contributions from folks like you that make it possible for me to travel to places like this and show you interesting and unusual guns like these. Thanks for watching.